Hello, welcome to Book Bites with Maggie. We're coming to you live from the Napanee Public Library. And on today's episode, we are going to be talking about some of our favorite books from the Napanee Public Library Reading Challenge from last year. Expand Your Horizons is the name of the thing, and I am Pat. Uh, today on our episode, we are again talking about Expand Your Horizons favorites. Expand Your Horizons has been our reading challenge for like three years? Third, yes, this is our third year. Three years. So the goal is to obviously to broaden our reading. So expanding your horizons, just like the title of the challenge. We have multiple challenges. Some of them are book challenges. Others are attending programs and what have you. Our challenge year is going to be ending here in just a couple of weeks at the end of January. And then in February, we're going to be kicking off a new year with a new set of challenges. The titles that Pat and I are going to be talking about today are some of our favorites from the prompts from this last year. Um, as we're talking about our books, we will hold them up. We'll try to explain what formats they come in outside of the traditional book format. Um, and hopefully, if they pique your interest, you'll let us know if you want them. If you leave a comment, give us a phone call, or send us a message on um, any of our social medias, we'll be happy to put those books aside for you, and you can pick them up at your convenience. Okay, you ready? Sure. Yeah? Yeah. Okay, so my first book is currently checked out, which is awesome. This is um, the book that I picked up to read for my young adult selection. So um, some of the books in our challenges are going to like have you read different genres. So this one was specifically read a book from the teen section. Not hard to do, um, but this was definitely probably my, one of my favorite teen books that I read last year. This is The Girls I've Been by Tess Sharp. It has a really fun cover and it says at the top two teens three teens two bank robbers and there's only one way out so in this book tess o'malley she is the daughter of a con artist and so from a young age whenever her mom would have like a target or a mark somebody who was a criminal in their own right she would join in on her mom's plot to bring down this criminal and so from a very young age, instead of just going to school, she would follow her mom around and she was able to change her identity when she would move place to place. She learned how to pick locks. She learned how to manipulate people. And this book kept me guessing. I had no idea what was gonna happen. The plots kept changing. Um, it's a love triangle that meets like thriller. Mm -hmm. So it's good. I'm so, going to add that to my list. Yeah, it was, it was fantastic. And it's a standalone. So if you're not looking Girls. at a um, series to read, this would be a fantastic one. Um, because Nora keeps changing her identity, in each of the things where she like does like a flashback and she learns and recalls different skills from her upbringing, you get to see such a well-rounded, smart woman who can manipulate any situation but then it makes you question who she is and how she is authentic which is it, it was very very thought-provoking for a teen book it was not very surface level like you it really kept me guessing so she could be like like frank i can't pronounce his last name the catch me if you can guy who, yes who did all yes. these, these different things that nobody ever caught him because he was so good yes okay and, and then being deceptive <laughs> what is the jennifer garner show where she's like has different hair and different clothes and stuff that's way before your time um and alias. It was that, alias alias yeah. okay so that old tv show yes. alias so yeah. as i'm reading this and i'm visualizing oh well she's wearing leather pants or oh she's wearing leggings like she was just such a different person in each of her former lives it all comes together, but it, like, I think I read this in like two sittings. Wow. Read it clear through. So it was very, very good. So this is again, The Girls I've Been by Tess Sharp. We have this as a physical book and as an e-audiobook on Libby. So there you go. Okay. okay. I'm so excited about your first book. <laughs> I know Maggie has read this one too. Um, this was my prompt for find a book that a cover you liked. So I do a lot of um, re listening to my audiobooks on Libby. So I was perusing through the books. It's like, nope, I'm like, nope, 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 nope. Finally saw this one, and I'm not even a flower person, but it struck me because of the different, the. It's beautiful. Yes, the blues and the yellows just really 
just really, it's like, oh, pretty book. I didn't know anything about it when I started to read it. But here's a little bit about what it is like. Okay, what's the title? The oh, other? I should say that. Should that. That's okay. Lulu's Cafe by T.I. Lowe. And, um, yeah. So we have a couple of her books, and it's they are in the inspirational fiction section. Um, so Leah left her, her abusive relationship, and she ends up in this little small town called Rivertown, South Carolina, where she re gets to reinvent herself. Um, she gets a job at Lulu, Lulu's Cafe, and the whole town embraces her, except for this one guy named Crawley Mason. Now, if you're an inspirational fiction person, lover, you will know that probably Leah and Crawley end up getting together. I'm not going to tell you if they do or not. But Leah has a lot of things that she has to work through because of her past relationships. Does she feel like she can never trust anybody again? So... You are so, like, vague here when you say she left her abusive relationship. Well, like this book <laughs> you are totally immersed you in the storyline yes. and you're bawling over this fictitious character but you know is like her husband her husband is evil i mean is truly downright truly, evil yes. like dateline nbc yes. evil and you don't get a grip of that looking at this beautiful really cover pretty. That's, so that's why i had no idea what yeah. i was getting into when Holy i started cow. reading it that yeah so that was that's that was yeah so um, you can get this book, like I said, we have it here in our Inspirational Fiction. We have it on Libby as an e-audio, and we also have it on Hoopla, which is one of our newer platforms that you can get um, audiobooks, e-books, music, comic books, all kinds of fun stuff on there. Um, and so it's on Hoopla in e-audio and e-book form. Yep, and you used the uh, Napanee Public Library card, your like your card number and your password that you created when you got your card with us in order to access those databases. Yep. So if you don't want to actually come into the building to pick up these materials, you have access to those. There's also quick links on our website. Okay, so another one of our task challenges was to read a book that was recommended to you on a podcast. I took that one step farther and I actually picked up the book that was written by somebody who has their own podcast. That sounds fun. The Joys of Being an Amateur, The Power of Falling in Love, and Why You Need a Hobby by Annie F. Downs. Her podcast has the exact same name. That sounds fun. And on her podcast, she interviews different people. And then at the end of every interview, she always says, what do you do for fun? And this kind of is like a whole bunch of short stories from the people that she's met before. It is um, kind of like reflections on the relationships that have impacted her life. So if you are an avid listener to her podcast, some of these stories are going to kind of feel like old keel because you've heard them before. But if you are new to her podcast or if you don't have a lot of her backstory, it's going to feel like very real new content. Um, part of it is written while she's in quarantine last year. So you um, pick up on the nuances of what a very social person is going through when they're put into quarantine and they're by themselves and how a social butterfly can be affected with their mental health. So this book actually hit a lot of different topics, but it was specifically one that I read for the um, a book that was mentioned on a podcast. So that was my prompt. This one is one that's available as a book and an e-audio book. It is on um, Libby as an e-book and it's also on Hoopla as an e-book. So um, kind of short stories, quick read, um, but will also make you think. Um, and when I was reading this one, it also kind of felt like it was written like she talks. Does that make sense? Yeah. So like not overly edited, just it felt like she was just talking. So um, easy to go. Want to do another one? Well, while we're on the same prompt, this is what I read for my um, book for, for a podcast. I honestly don't listen to podcasts. So... <laughs> So I did some searching on books that have been talked about in podcasts. So this was one of them. Um, the Goldfinch by Donna Tart. It is a whopping 700 a tome. and 71 pages, I believe. Which is funny because the other book that I have here, which is only 400 and some pages, is about the same size. So I thought that was funny. Um, <laughs> but it is a very heavy book. So this is not one you want to... Read while you're laying down in bed and have it drop on your nose because you may break your nose. But anyway, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Please don't break your nose on our books. <laughs> no, we don't want blood on our books. <laughs> 
Okay, what's the goldfish anyway, about? This is about a young boy named Theo whose mother is killed in an explosion at an art museum. Theo survives and he is trying to make his way out of the art museum and as he does, he comes across this old man who is in the process of passing away from his injuries and this old man gives Theo a ring. And then Theo decides also on his way out to steal this painting called the Goldfinch. So then this is the story of how Theo um, grows up. He lives for a while with a very prominent family because his dad didn't want him, but then his dad decided he wanted him, moves him out to Las Vegas. Um, Theo kind of gets into the criminal underworld. And so the story then kind of, he glides back and forth between being wealthy and being able to assimilate into the wealthy families that he knows and the dark, dirty, greedy underworld of being a criminal. Um, so, and there's also a bit of a love story in there for those of you who like love stories. We have this book. Well, as you can see, it's in book. We have it on e-audio on Libby. We don't have it on um, Hoopla, check that. But we also have a movie here called The Goldfinch that is based on this book. So if you like DVD or movies, you can watch that. I, and so it's like, now I want to check that out to watch, to to watch that one to compare. What's the, so the oh, winner, the winner. Of Pulitzer yes. Prize. Okay. Um, Donna Tart won the Pulitzer Prize for this book. So, so it, like the way that you're, I haven't read this one. So this one, it feels more like a thriller than just fiction. Or is it not that fast plot? It's not that thing? fast plot, okay. no. No, but but yeah, it, it, it was a very good one, and the cover is just doesn't do it. For well, that's me, that's the that's the painting. He had the he stole his painting and he had it hidden away for a very long time. So this so is this like is, paper this is that's the paper wrapped that's over covering the painting. The painting. Okay. Yes, that probably we just went a from more. like such a beautiful cover to like I probably wouldn't pick that up off of a shelf. Or... So, but okay, that's but why I didn't read no. this as my beautiful cover book. Well, that's I, true, but it it got yes. me thinking. So yeah. Like so it. if you're right, if you like long tome books, this is this is one I would recommend. Cool. Pam um, said the goldfinch is amazing, so Pam really liked it. Yes, oh, okay. yes, she did. <laughs> and Christy was making fun of your nose broken books. <laughs> yeah, it that's could happen. It, yeah, you know, crazy things can happen. Books can hurt you. <laughs> they can. Um, so you already did your book with a beautiful cover. This is mine. It's not new to Book Bites. This is um, one that we mentioned back last year in season two. Um, this is a time slip. So it definitely fit into there. If you have been an avid watcher of Book Bites, you're gonna already kind of know a little bit about this one. This is The Lost Apothecary by Sarah Penner. It has this beautiful like foil cover on it. And it's um, a mix between 19, or excuse me, 1791 and modern day London, and it's going to follow three different points of view. So each chapter is going to come from a different perspective. One is a 12 year old girl, one is a budding historian, and then one is going to be the um, apothecary, which is like a that's German for medicine, Me yeah, like a med uh, like, like a pharmacist, a pharmacist. And so she has taken her skills, our pharmacist has taken her skills from treating ailments and turning them into poisons. And then those poisons she sells to women who have had men that wronged her. I feel like I just said that with this. Yes. Yeah. I promise, I do. So I don't, I don't have you, a plot out for men in my books, but can apparently- Can I ask you a question? Yeah. Did you pick this book up because it was recommended or because the cover is so pretty? Okay, so I actually read this one before it was published. So as I- an arc. Uh huh. Yes, as an arc. I read this one before it was published, and like I had an idea of what the cover would look like, but it because did not look like this at all. Christy said that you're not supposed to judge a book by its cover. <laughs> is this Christy though... with a K and an I? <laughs> this is Christy Brink. Oh, my sister. You haven't read this one yet. You need to read but this she, one. But you were judging the goldfinch based on the cover. She says yes. you should. You never it. judge a but we all do. <laughs> I do. I, I don't have to, enough time in my life to and sometimes we ask you read to. ugly yes, books. Sometimes, and actually that's been a prompt in something I've done before is read a book with a cover that you wouldn't have picked up otherwise. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, so there's another Christy, obviously not the one that's watching us right now, who has also <laughs> read this book, really loved it, so I didn't know who we were talking about. Um, so this one here, uh, I picked it up. 
it has a beautiful cover, but I did read it before the physical cover came out. Do you want to hold this one up so you can kind of see the foil wrapping on it? So the two parts of this story, there's rules to the poisons. One, um, she's only going to sell her poisons to women and they're only going to be used to harm men to get them out of situations. So a woman cannot poison another woman and whoever the murderer is and whoever her victim is has to be written down into the apothecary's notebook. So that kind of pulls the plot all together, but through, you know, multiple centuries, the storyline all comes together, going back and forth and having those different points of view. So this is a fantastic book. Um, Sarah Penner, this one is going to be available as an ebook, an e-audio book, and a physical book. And we do have that one also in Hoopla and on Libby. So I hope that you are able to check that out in some format or another. Okay, what's your next one? No, Ms. go Pat? ahead. Go ahead. Do you have one? more than I do. Okay, so this next book, we needed to read a book that focused on mental health. This was one that I probably picked up um, more to read because I needed a nonfiction read. This is What Happened to You, Conversations on Trauma, Healing, Resilience, um, and it's written by two different people, Oprah Winfrey and Bruce D. Perry, who is um, a psychologist. This one, I actually listened to it on Libby, and the way that the book is written is exactly like what it mentions. It's a conversation. So it's the back and forth of hitting and missing, almost like a therapy session. Mm -hmm. Like you're sitting in the corner listening to them on the couch, and it goes back and forth between some like stories and remembrances, and then also some clinical um, therapy sessions that Bruce had from people that he has also treated. And you almost feel Oprah, because she's they narrate it themselves, you almost feel her having these aha moments in their conversations. Very much so, yeah. I read that, or listened oh, you to, did that this one too. Too. Yeah, I listened yeah. to that one too. So I picked it up kind of with intimidation, like what is a millionaire gonna be struggling with type thing. And people are people. People are people. And money does not change where she has come from and the trauma that she has experienced and some of her reflections i had never heard before some of the things that she actually is very quite frank about in this story they they were hard hitters but because of the way that this book was written in that conversation style and they interrupt each other it kind of it, it made it something it was easy to absorb without just going right over my head with big fancy medical words. So this one, um, again, we do have it as a physical book. I'm sure it's great as a physical book. It's got different colors in it so you know who is talking at any given time. But listening to it, I feel like I got a lot more out of it because when they would speed up their voice or interrupt each other yeah. or based on the way that they were like kind of chuckling or laughing, I could figure out the emotions behind a specific topic in conversation. So nothing wrong with the physical book, but in this one, the audiobook was fantastic for me. Um, again, we do have this one as available as a physical book and on Libby, but not on Hoopla. So this would be one that I recommend. Okay, go ahead. So the next one I'm going to, to talk about is a tragedy, and it truly, truly was. Um, the Things We Cannot Say by Kelly Remmer. Um, it's a story that alternates between modern times and World War II. And um, Alice is one of the characters. She, she, her and her husband have a child. The child is autistic and Alice takes, does all the, the work with, with um, this, her son. And her grandmother encourages her to go to Poland to find out more about the family history. So she's very leery about leaving her son and her husband together. It ends up good, but you know, moms don't like to leave their kids with other people. <laughs> um, so anyway, and then there's then there's a lady named Elena who has survived the World War II. She survived a Russian concentration camp, or refugee camp, I should say, and um, she has fall, had fallen in love with someone. And along the journey, they come over to the United States, and you kind of piece a few things together, but. But there was a wow, aha moment at the very end because your, your brain is thinking that this story is flowing one way and then they make this huge reveal that I didn't see coming. And I don't know if I should have read between the lines or not, but I didn't. Um, so I so it's a, a time slip, but then it still has those connections. Yes. They, now, as somebody who really enjoys genealogy. Yes, I thought it was fascinating. Okay. Yeah. And what, like what 
task does this was this was a tragedy oh because and it was a tragedy on multiple levels i mean just the whole world war ii and being in the russian concentration camp and then people you know people that she loved died and then all those fun things oh well, not fun things all those sad things i'm sorry i shouldn't have said fun things all those sad things that yes. happens in your life and then the the big tragedy is what i can't talk about because i want you to read the book so that you find out for yourself unfortunately we do not have the physical book here but you can go to overdrive and either listen to the audiobook or read the book and we also have it on ebook on hoopla perfect okay so when when there is a task on expand your horizons it's very broad so when it says read a book that is about a tragedy or has like a subject line or a theme about a tragedy you can take that wherever you want so you could have read a non-fiction book on trauma you could have read you know a biography that's based on a you know a war a traumatic the, event the, the, or the, the, by the, nicholas sparks yeah. yes yes <laughs> the two girls the mistaken identity book with yes. the two girls that they were in a crash one girl passed away the other girl survived but there was the mix-up mm -hmm. So, you know, that would be, yeah. So we yeah, like to take things broad. Yes. yes, we love that. So I took mine a totally different way. I am a huge reader of, like, these illustrated covers. This comes up all the time. I'm like, oh, Denver look, it's a faceless romance. little, like, <laughs> book. But this one was my tragedy. So, like, yours is about real life, you know, concentration camps and stuff like that. Mine is about, um, it's a love story to begin. And then the guy is killed, like, well, that's like a tragedy. really early on. And I started bawling, and I'm like, well, I guess this is my task for a tragedy because, like, I, te I, I cried in this book. And that's not a bloody nose like we were talking about earlier. <laughs> but I cried inside of this book because, like, crap. Like, there went the whole storyline. He's dead. So what's going to happen in the next three quarters of this book because one person is dead? Well, it is a tragedy because that that – process of healing that has to happen um, takes a sharp plot twist. So in this book, it's Anna and Spencer. Spencer passes away very early on. That's not going to be a plot twist. It tells you right on the back of the book that he's going to die. And when, when he passes away, that emotional trauma that is happening for Anna is, it's reoccurring. She starts to heal and then she you know, enters those stages of grief all over again. And, you know, it's, I don't remember if it's Christmas Eve or it's New Year's Eve. At some point she calls Spencer's phone expecting just to hear his voice, to have that calming effect that her husband could have over her and somebody else picks up the phone. So you get this PS I love you vibe to it. Why is somebody else answering her husband's phone? It goes into the reality of what can happen with a phone number and it makes you go why i mean like it, it made sense it's explained how this happens and your phone numbers are recycled and all this kind of stuff but that it adds into a third element of healing but at the same time like it's so precarious in this healing structure of how these two people who do not know each other and then what becomes this phone conversation back and forth is built on sand and it is not a firm foundation and what the secrets that might not have been debilitating before can totally make that new mountain crash and crumble so it looks like a happy-go-lucky book again you pick it up because it's cute and funny looking but oh boy this one kept me going so this is the last goodbye by fiona lucas this one is my tragedy so if you're looking for a good cry this weekend this might be one to pick up we do have this one. Um, I didn't write this one down. Oh. It's a physical book. Can somebody <laughs> check and see if it's on Libby or on Hoopla for me? And I'll put a thing in the comments so we know what formats it is. That's my bad. I forgot to write it down. I only have one left. Me do you wanted to go? Go I, for it. I think ours are both. This was my book. My prompt was a book written by an author who has a pseudonym. Oh, yeah, okay. And now I think that's what yours yeah, is, too. Is. Yeah. So I don't know. What is a pseudonym? A pseudonym is a name that somebody uses in lieu of their original or their real name. Um, Where are the most, the most pen common? Pen name. It's yeah, a pen, pen name. name, yes. What are some of the most common ones that people might not realize? 
Well, J.K. Rowling is something Galbraith. Right here. <gasps> No way. That's the one I guess. Robert Galbraith. That's yeah. what I just said. Yes. The okay. person who wrote Harry Potter wrote this book as an adult book, and since so she had such wide claim of fame as as a youth or YA author or teen author, um, she didn't want. To, well, I shouldn't say that. She decided to to write this as with as a different name so that people wouldn't be saying, well, she can't write adult books yeah. type thing. You know, she can write whatever she wants. Mm -hmm. But there are multiple people who have done that. So like Nora Roberts, she writes underneath different names. She has, um, J.K. Robb, I think, is one of them. J.D. J.D. Robb. Yeah, writes underneath and different names. Yeah. So, um, so like there's more authors out there than people probably realize. This was, again, a very easy prompt. All it takes is a little bit of investigation to see who the actual author is. And with all of our prompts, so with last year's list, if you're still trying to go through it before the end of this month, and with our new task list that's gonna be starting in February, if at any point you don't understand a task or you have questions about it or you need reader's advisory and you would like some recommendations, that's what we're here for. Yeah. We are happy to let you pick our brains and we'll help you complete those tasks and maybe pick out some books that you wouldn't have found for yourself. And then along with that, we have, for those who like Expand Your Horizons or are interested in joining us, we do meet. And we're going to try to meet quarterly this year so that we can talk about the books we've read. If you have questions, mm -hmm. then you can come to one of our meetings and share with suggestions each other. And, mm -hmm. and, and get, you know, get suggestions if you're stuck on something. And we have a Facebook group. We do have a yep. Facebook group. Yep. That so you there's can constant join. communication. Yes. yes. So this is, this is actually, yes, what did I say? Oh, Cuckoo's Calling. By Robert Galbraith, who is also J.K. Rowling. Mm -hmm. um, this is a first book in a series. I believe there's four books in this series. And it's about a disabled war veteran. Um, Corm Cormoran Strike, I can't pronounce his name very well. He's hired to find out what happened to Lula and Landry. Did she, did she jump or was she murdered? So this kind of follows her along. Is it like a police thriller? It is, it's, well, it's a mystery, so okay. yeah. Um, it takes him into into the world of multi billionaires, um, rock star boyfriends, designers. You know, just about every every rich person that you can find, this man has interviewed and to find out what happened to Lula. Um, so I don't know, but anyway, I would recommend. I know Pam, who or talked about the other one, she loves these books too. This book and the this book are about the same size. This one, though, is 400 and some pages versus the 700. Okay, so, so if I was to read this one, do I need to read each of the four? Are the they're, four they're, they're individual? Separate, they're individual. It's, it's all him as the inspector, but they're okay. four different cases. So you wouldn't have to necessarily so read, read them in order or more. Right. in tandem. So okay. and we have them in our mystery section. as They're only in, in the library. We have them in the large print and the regular print mystery section. They're not in um, Libby or Hoopla. Okay. okay. So, But this was another good one. And Pam... Pam let us know that The Last Goodbye is only a book. Okay. Oh, well, thank you for looking that up. That's probably okay. why I didn't write it down, because I was going to remember. And I didn't. <laughs> so now it's your turn. Yeah, so my pseudonym author is Christina Lauren. I've read almost everything. Well, there's one series I don't think I've read by them. So um, it says Christina Lauren. You'd think that's one person. It's actually a duo that writes together. Christina Hobbs and Lauren Billings, they write underneath one name. So that's where you get just their first names. And they publish books together. This is going to be um, an open door romance. To me, an open door romance is going to be a little bit more descriptive than they close the door and then... The sun is coming up the next day. So it's going to give you the juicy details if you're looking for a romance, but it also um, can follow a trope. So in this case, it's a fake dating trope. So if you are a fan of Hallmark movies and you are familiar with what that looks like, where you're pretending to date or you're taking home somebody who's not really your significant other to meet your family, it's gonna follow along those themes. Well, what happens when you're fake dating? you oftentimes fall in love. <laughs> so there you go. So this is going to be the soulmate equation. It's gonna have kind of tech advancements in what it looks like to be part of a dating profile and a dating app. So it's kind of a fun contemporary read. I thought that the banter was fantastic, not only between the two main um, protagonists, the two main characters, but also the sub characters. Honestly, the sub characters totally made this book. You want them to be your friends. And 
this is not a series it's not a it's a standalone but i would love to see like an individual book by some of these sub characters which other authors do mm -hmm. and that's they were great so i hope that you would enjoy this book as well um this is the soulmate equation we have it as a physical book an ebook and an e-audio book this one is available on some of our other databases so okay we did not that cover book sounds a lot like the popular one the love hypothesis okay i have that one on my list but i haven't read that one yet it has a blue cover so, right yeah it's probably with like people like this yeah it's like one of the, <laughs> it's one of the best sellers for like romantic comedies right now okay so that sounds yes. a lot i have like that them. one on my list so i wonder i'll probably compare them you know like when you read two books that are very similar yes. you compare them and um, obviously we only covered a few of our tasks for the 2021 Expand Your Horizons season. Next month, February 1st, we start our winter reading program and it's the new kickoff for Expand Your Horizons. This year we're also going to add in an Expand Your Horizons Junior, which is going to be super fun for our younger readers. Yay. They also are going to have a variety of tasks, get together and have fun. Um, and I'm super excited to have this not only expanding our reading, but it's also expanding among their generations. Okay, so I totally put Pat on the spot right before we went live, and I said, do you remember any of the tasks off the top of your head? And yes, so, yes, I do. <laughs> so she's been scribbling down notes as we've been talking. Can you share with us some of the tasks that are going to be on the 2022 Expand Your Horizons Challenge? I sure can. So our 20, well, 2022, since there's a lot of twos in there, we decided we want to read a book with a two in the title. Now it can be just the number two, it can be the number 426, as long as there's a two someplace in the title, either just the number or spelled out, we don't care. That'd be fun. We just want the number two someplace in the title. We are also going to read a book set in the Arctic Circle. Well, I should say you are going to read a book set in the Arctic Circle. So a country in the Arctic Circle. So it can be Russia, it could be Alaska. I know Alaska's not a country, but that's the only part of the United States that hits the Arctic Circle. Norway, um, Norway Sweden, yeah, the Iceland, well, we have them, We have them all written down so mm -hmm. that you will know when you get your prompt. Um, we are going to have, ask you to read a duology, which is a book that's a series of two. So instead of a trilogy, two. which is three, a duology is two. two. Um, it's a book set or in or near water, so on an island, on a boat, along a river, you know, it's wide open. Mm -hmm. um, we, we're asking as a bonus to go visit another library just to Ooh, yeah. see just to see what they other libraries look like what what they have to offer and if you come back with something exciting that you're like oh, these guys do this so I have their newsletter and this is what they do let us know so yeah. maybe we can do it here it's kind of cool yeah um we also have a resource page that I don't know how many people know about our electronic resources where so where's our resource page our found? resources page is on our website mm -hmm under resources. resources and then electronic resources i believe there are recipes on there that's what i like i've you know that's what i want to do is for this is find a recipe make it and maybe bring it into one of our groups meetings and share that we have a to z on the united states so if you're doing a state project there's all kinds of information at one spot we have ancestry.com um there's a newspaper um, newspapers.com, I think, is, is linked to that. So there are multiple different electronic resources. resources that we have that you guys can use. Um, Ancestry can only be used here in the building, though. Or at the Napanee Center. Or the Napanee Center. Mm -hmm. um, I'm trying to think what else. I thought of something else, and I don't remember what it was. So it's based on your IP address. Yes. It's, yeah. So it's, it's contingent on where you are signing in, but you'll have access to that with your library card. So the best part about Expand Your Horizons is that you do not have to have a library card. That's no, correct. Yes. Yeah, so um, you can read books from home. Yes. Mm -hmm. You can absolutely read a magazine from the doctor's office. You know, like if it if it fits your prompt. Yeah. yeah. If it's yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And what we did at our last meeting, we asked the participants who were there, what would you like your tasks to be for next year? Yeah. So that's where some of these came from. The and our reading lists just keep on growing. It, it our to be read yeah. lists are massive. But you know what? This is fun. We enjoy having this Digital Researchers Readers Advisory with you. This is only our second episode for this season. When you come back to join us in February, our first 
uh, theme is going to be mysteries and thrillers. And for the first time ever, we're going to have two guest hosts. So I hope you come back. Join us if you are looking for some mystery and thriller uh, reading options. Bring a piece of paper and pencil. And as always, we will have um, a list in the comments if you don't have a chance to write down specific authors and titles. So, Pat, thank you so much for joining well, us thank today. You for this was fun. Uh, we will see you next time. And our content will be available here on our social media page as well as pretty soon it'll be over on YouTube. So we hope that you found some titles that will pique your interest. Let us know if we can put them on hold for you. Until next time, see you later. Bye.